so on a small scale, I think for local municipalities, I think, again, it's a positive because you are offering your customers, especially with Georgia Power, offering that as an alternative energy. It also provides less demand on fossil fuels. And if the, if the township owns that land and it's just sitting there, then instead of changing it into an impervious solution like a parking lot, a solar panel in the middle of a field still retains the absorptive quality of a field, but then also provides an alternative energy mechanism. So I, on the small scale, I think that's, that's great. I think in order, so in order for Augusta or the something the small of, the sm or as, you know, a small size as Fort Gordon, I think if they have probably applied them to their buildings and used the array, they could be almost self-sufficient with that solar, solar farm. Um, we, are, we are at a point within society that green technology, we know, we understand how to make solar panels. Um, we, the infrastructure is there to support them. We just need an all around um, encompassing, that's really not really good, <laughs> encompassing um, movement in order to get them so that they're used everywhere. For most people, yes, some of them think of them as eyesores, um, but personally, when I roll by a house and see solar panels, I'm like, that's a great idea because, for example, I had a friend who lived in Baltimore. He put a um, panel the size of my binder in their backyard, and just by that panel, they were almost able to get 50% of their electricity from that solar panel in their house, and they have two kids, three kids. Um, so he saw a huge difference in terms of the reduction. So solar panels, as green technology um, infrastructure has increased, their um, ability to capture the sun's energy has, it has increased as well. So I, the, it's there to be used. It's, it is a green energy source, right? And the idea here is that if you have this large turbine um, that will turn as the wind blows, obviously they need to be strategically placed. So oftentimes they're along the coast. Um, oftentimes they're in the uh, nation's mid, um, midsection because those are really windy areas. Um, again, um, it reduces our uh, dependency on fossil fuels. Um, and the biggest complaints we often hear are bird strikes. However, um, bird, we are building up glass buildings and birds cannot navigate glass buildings either, but we continue to put those up. Um, birds will learn to navigate around wind turbines and they're not um, they're not built in a way that they are impervious to long distance migration. Um, again, a lot of people think they're eyesores because who wants to go to a beach and see these turbines? But if you, if you think of the size of a turbine and the ability for it to, the blades to turn and then send the electricity back to the grid to be used for industry or to heat water in homes um, is a pretty substantial feat. Um, I've heard both hydroth hydrothermal or you know hydroelectricity, which we currently use mm -hmm. in the form of dams. Um, I think um, it would be great to see um, if dams are going to be used for hydroelectricity that they currently be used for that, not as um, a water containment system. We have right now, I think um, there are portions of the United States, especially the Southwest, that are dealing with issue water issues because we have dammed them, specifically in the Southwest. Um, in our area, that hasn't um, been necessarily the case, but we have had, you know, uh, U.S. Supreme Court cases in regards to Beaufort Dam and the water that makes it to the Apalachicola estuary. So there are, there are definitely water issues. So hydroelectricity obviously is good if the dam is used specifically for that purpose. Um, we do not use a lot of geothermal energy here. For example, Iceland used 75% of their energy from geothermal um, sources. That's because there's not a lot of geothermal energy places, you know, areas that we can use them um, in the United States. But perhaps there are areas in Alaska that may be able to, or places in Hawaii that, that use them. Um, but those are definitely two other alternative energy sources. Yes, we are taking the right steps, but if, and I, I'm not sure if we will always, if we will be entirely able to be green energy, but we definitely need to be more green than we are today. Uh, fossil fuels will eventually run out. Um, it is a non-renewable resource, especially the way that we're, you know, we're using it now. Um, we have to find al alternative energy sources if we want, you know, society to be, to be fueled into the future. So I do. I think if you, because it seems like society these days is definitely based on following the Joneses, even just small changes, even if you think that 
solar panels are really expensive, buy a small one and see if you can notice the difference. And then you obviously are going to notice the difference in your bills and you're gonna to talk to your friends and hopefully enough in the reduction in the bills because everybody's all about saving money. So I think the easiest way to start if you're considering uh, trying to use alternative energy, I think a solar panel or a small solar panel is the way to go.